Welcome to Breaking Bread. I'm your host, Stacey A. Smith. Breaking Bread focuses on conversations with education, business, and community leaders who share a passion for the educational outcomes of black students. Kingmakers of Oakland will host its annual spring symposium on April 25th to 27th at the Oakland Marriott Hotel. The spring symposium is an opportunity to fellowship with educators and includes dynamic speakers. On today's show, our founder and CEO, Chris Chapman, will interview some of our amazing guest speakers from the event. Enjoy the show. Greetings, my name is Chris Chapman, the founder and CEO of Kingmakers of Oakland. I'm glad uh, to be here with you all today as we have three extraordinary individuals that we will be featuring at our spring symposium, Black Love is Liberation, April 25th through April 27th here at Oakland at our spring symposium. Uh, these three individuals uh, will be releasing a black paper uh, that deals with the theme, Black Love is Liberation. And so without further ado, uh, I wanna join and welcome or ask ask uh, these th three extraordinary individuals to join us. Uh, the leader of this organization, uh, Sheree Tang, uh, want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and then King Rasan and King Rumi. Um, so without further ado, uh, welcome. Please join me in welcoming uh, Sister Sheree and the two kings, Rumi and Rasan. Sister Thank Sheree, you. would you mind introducing yourself? Thank you. Thank you, Brother Chris. It is an honor to be here with Breaking Bread's Spring Symposium podcast. Uh, my name is Sheree Tang. I use pronouns she, her, hers. I am here in unceded Ohlone territory, Oakland, California, in the Fruitvale District. And I have been an organizer since I was 17. And now I've been consulting for the last 25 years. Thank you, Sheree. Uh, King Rasan, can you introduce yourself, please? Greetings, greetings. My name is Rasan Smith. I am a junior psychology major from Oakland, California, attending Morehouse College, and I am a part of Sheree's team. And I have also had the great opportunity to be a part of Kingmakers with being in the Student Leadership Council back in 2016-17 uh, at Monterey Middle School. Great to be here. Ashe. Thank you, King Rasan. And King Rumi, can you introduce yourself, King? Yes. <clears throat> Greetings. My name is Rumi Smith. Um, I'm from Oakland, California, and I'm currently living in Atlanta. Uh, I am also part of Cherie's team, and I'm an upcoming visual storyteller, and I'm just honored to be a part of this experience. Right on. I want to thank all of you for taking time today uh, to share a little bit about who you are, whose you are, and the work that you're going to be showcasing at the uh, Spring Symposium. Um, but it's very important, as Sister Cherie talked about, the ancestral land uh, of the Ohlone people that we um, stand on, that I also, in that spirit of acknowledging that ancestral land, we're coming up uh, to one of the freedom fighters that allowed uh, her, with grace and leadership for us to move out of an in-district department to now uh, an independent nonprofit organization. And one of those freedom fighters who helped us in particular quantify and qualify our work uh, was our beloved sister, Jean Wing, who worked with me uh, within the school district and was uh, prior to that a freedom fighter in the movement. And as I've been blessed to now learn about and work with Sister Cherie, uh, came to learn that early on, uh, those two uh, extraordinary queens in the movement worked together. And uh, we now have a memorial scholarship fund named the Jean Wing Memorial Scholarship Fund. And we're on the heels of celebrating her birthday um, in the month of, of March. And so I would be remiss if we didn't call into her space and give just a moment for Sister Tashri just to share a little bit about uh, her partnership uh, with Sister Jean as well. And so Sister Tashri, can you just share a few words about our beloved sister uh, and then we'll continue to move forward. Thank you. Oh, Chris, thank you. I, am, I stand on the shoulders of my sister, Queen Jeannie Yanemura Wing. I met Jeannie when I was 17 at the International Hotel. At the time, it was a thriving scene with community organizations on Kearney Street in San Francisco, Manila Town, with single retired 
merchant marine men living upstairs in single rooms. I met Jeannie as a freedom fighter. We joined an organization at the time, it was called Iwo Kim, the Righteous Harmonious Fist. And we believed that Black people, Indigenous people, Black and Brown folks, we all need to be united under the banner of liberation and freedom to take off the yokes of oppression and enslavement in the mind, body, and spirit, and that we can fight for a better future for ourselves, our communities, our descendants. And Jeannie was a servant leader. She was not one of the people that came into the room pounding on her chest and saying, I'm going to sit at the head of the table. Jeannie was a quiet leader, always thinking about how do we do this in a way that unites a multiracial movement for liberation and justice for all of us? We were young, we were idealistic, and we were fierce. And Jeannie was always bringing up the rear. She led from the middle, many times from behind. I miss Jeannie. And thank you for calling in her spirit today, Chris. Ashe, Ashe. Thank you, uh, Sister Cherie. Um, thank you, Jean Yanamara Wing. Um, we carry her, her, her spirit forward in our work, as we know, in addressing these systems of oppression and addressing white supremacy, that the only way to do that is through a multiracial, intergenerational, cross-functional approach. And so we want to honor uh, Sister Jean Yanamara Wing uh, and ask for y'all to go to our website and make a tax-deductible contribution on behalf of Jean Wing so we can make possible the next generation of freedom fighters to have access to the necessary resources to go to college. Uh, and so in that spirit, um, we acknowledge her, her, her gift and her presence. And thank you again, Sister, Sh Sister Cherie. Um, so now at this point, I'd like to pivot to um, this extraordinary convening that we'll be uh, having here in Oakland, April 25th through the 27th. And one of the uh, products and processes we'll be introducing to the community will be a black paper, our reframe around a white paper, a black paper that really captures and codifies the power of one of our anchor values, love. Love is an anchoring uh, tenant to, uh, to inspiring and facilitating the movement. And so I wanna give uh, our team of researchers um, the opportunity maybe to tee up what is to come in the conference and maybe frame a little bit about uh, this black paper. Uh, uh, and so Sister Cherie, maybe if you could frame it and then we'll hear uh, for, from Kings, Rasan and Rumi regarding uh, the work you'll be sharing with us at uh, the Spring Symposium. Yes, love is an antidote to domination. As colonized, oppressed people, we have been told to not love ourselves in so many ways. So who wins? Who benefits when we don't love ourselves? And how do we measure love? Right, so that was a challenge that someone threw down for me years ago. So here we are with Kingmakers and interviewing 15 young men, black men who have been through the Kingmakers program. And we interviewed over a dozen of the caregivers in the, in the King's circles. So Rasan and Rumi will give us a taste of what we heard and what we learned. Thank you, Sister Sheree. Um, let's pass it to King Rasan, who, uh, as he referenced in his introduction, um, was a benefactor, is an alumni of the work that was created within a district. Uh, but we're all too familiar with how these systems self-correct and the evolution of uh, the work we started in the district today now is an independent nonprofit organization uh, named Kingmakers of Oakland. So Brother Rasan, maybe talk about um, in the spirit of sharing some of the learnings around the report and what your role is. Also, maybe feel free to share a story on how love was modeled uh, to you and with you in your classroom uh, at Montero Middle School or with the Student Leadership Council. King, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Baba Chris. <laughs> For my role 
in this work it has been for one an amazing experience just being able to rekindle with some of my brothers that i met in student leadership council and having the honor to interview them and catch up with uh, that it's been years since we were in the program where they are in life what they're doing how they are in general and it's just been nothing short of amazing seeing the results of us going through that program and how we carried what we learned from our dozens of great mentors such as baba chris on with us in our going into our early adult life and to actually give a teaser and to also share a little bit of how my experience was being in the class i would like to share a short excerpt of a creative piece that i will be displaying once we have our presentation uh, for the spring symposium april 25th through the 27th mdp manhood development program a class whose main objective was to teach me who i am a class full of black boys learning about how america resembles the matrix and we kings must channel the noise years before george floyd we had a lesson on a young man by the name of michael brown baba kevin told us how he was gunned down by police for nothing more than fitting a description of black or brown i don't want to give too much but that was just that experience of being in Oakland Public School District classroom and learning about the realities of being a black man and what that can look like, good or bad, it was a very humbling and enriching ex experience for me because I never really knew too much about black history before I got to MDP class. I thought we started off as slaves, but learning how we were kings and queens, learning about my African heritage, it was, it was a revelation that I look forward, it made me open my eyes to what more I can do in life outside of what you would normally hear that a black male could do, which is sports, music, or anything of that nature, which can all be fine and dandy, but there's no limits to what we can do. And Kingmakers and MVP helped me realize that. I say, King. Um, well, that's part of uh, our commitment, really, is helping kings understand who and whose they are. So we're just appreciative, man, of your presence. Um, we see you. We're proud of you to know that we have been in this journey, um, not just through middle school, not just through high school. But now where are you at, uh, brother? Where, what, what school are you attending right now? I'm attending Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. Come on. Come on. Legacy work. We're proud of you, King. Thank you for giving us a, a taste of uh, what's to come at this year's Spring Symposium, Black Love is Liberation. Please join us for an extraordinary three-day experience at our Spring Symposium 2024. This year's theme is Black Love is Liberation. Our premier leadership development conference brings education and community leaders from around the country to network with others, learn new impactful strategies, and bring those solutions back to your respective schools and communities. Educators, parents, and community leaders, you can register now. Uh, so now I'd like to bring in um, uh, our, your brother and our brother, King Rumi, who's also uh, part of Sister Cherie's uh, extraordinary team of researchers um, that have been doing the qualitative data, lifting up these stories, capturing the impact on how we're centering Black boys while serving all. So uh, Rumi, if you could take a moment, King, uh, maybe to share a little bit about uh, what it is you'll be presenting uh, and uh, maybe a, a story or a vignette uh, that can wet the palate of uh, the viewer on the other side uh, for them to uh, like w ensure that they attend uh, our spring symposium. So I wanna give you the opportunity, man, just to share some of your, your genius as well. Thank you, King. Yeah, most definitely. Um, <clears throat> I was on as part of this project uh, doing the interviews of these young kings and kingmakers and it was just amazing hearing their stories and I think uh, what I wanted to cover was just kind of the the main uh, topics or headlines that, that the kings covered of what they really felt, um, how they really felt love showed up to them from kingmakers. And so some of, some of the headlines that came across was respect. Uh, mentorship, presence, empowerment, brotherhood, and life lessons. And I think that, that those came across in a lot of different ways for the Kings and the love that they experienced from Kingmakers. Um, a quote that I, that I got from one of them for mentorship was, 
It was good to see a familiar face, especially at a young age, just to see someone wanting to uplift your day, even if just for an hour or a half hour. Representation is key. And I feel like the Kingmakers of Oakland always wants to keep good representation because when you see a familiar face, it just relaxes you inside to know there is someone like you in the same space that you can divert to if you need to, especially for the young brothers who didn't have father figures in their life or immediate household it was important for them to have somebody to make a difference. And that's just one of the quotes from, from these kings. And this is the, the insight and the, the stories that they have and the talks that we had with them was just so amazing. And it was such a blessing to speak with them. And I feel like I learned so much from them. And this has just been, the Kingmakers have, been, have made such an impact on their lives. It's been an amazing experience to be a part of. Excellent, uh, King. Thank you um, for the role that you play in really centering the, uh, the voices and experiences of our young kings and giving them an opportunity to reflect back on some of that impact. I'd also would love for the viewing audience just to get a little bit of sense of who and whose you are uh, and what are you doing right now. Um, so maybe just take a little bit moment um, to share a little bit about yourself and why, like why research uh, and then uh, where are you, what university are you attending uh, right now uh, as well? Okay, so um, as part of this team, I'm, I, th I think that I'm the, me and Brother Rasan are the intergenerational piece of this team. So we wanted to make a team that was, that could be young and also have the, the wisdom and the age um, associated with um, Sister Sheree and Baba Chris. So we, we made an intergenerational team. And I think that my role in this has just been to, to really be able to communicate and connect with the young kings on a more, um, just a different level than you would normally get from maybe an adult speaking to them or um, an older person. And so I think that that connection and that intergenerational um aspect really made this project um, different and special. And uh, sorry, you had also asked me um, oh, just, what, what you're doing now. I, like, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just a it. visual storyteller right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm growing and um, working on mm -hmm. my skills. I'm living in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a recent graduate from Clark Atlanta University. Um, I graduated with mass media mass media communications and public relations. And so I'm just trying to, you know, expand my skills and become a visual That's storyteller. Right. I love to do work that involves young people because young people are the future. And I feel like That's right. any any type of work that, that can help them or that can expose like what what the good that we can do for the community, the good that the community can do for young people is just amazing. So I, I really That's love right. this. Excellent. Well, you're doing it, brother. Not 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 aspiring to. You are a visual visual storyteller as we speak, and so we see you. We appreciate you, and just thank you uh, for the role and spirit that you've brought to this uh, this project. I mean, one of the things as I was listening to you speak um, is the power and importance that our young kings are who they see, and part of what Kingmakers of Oakland. Um, uh, posits and tries to cultivate and perpetuate is ensuring that our young kings have access to brothers and sisters and non-binary royalty throughout the diaspora that see the beauty and brilliance and innate greatness in them. That not only our kings are who they see, they're also uh, what they hear. And so, you know, we purchased a uh, 10,000 square foot recording studio, video, TV, uh, podcast, production studio, a fashion design studio, an animation studio, so our young kings can see the beauty, brilliance, and innate greatness in these asset-based uh, visualizations and stories that our young King Rumi is doing now, but also aspires to do. So we don't have to ask permission uh, to get into somebody's studio, that now we own it. And so, uh, you know, the work uh, is vast and complex, 
uh, and there's no turnkey uh, or immediate response that this really is about legacy work, much in the way that Sister Cherie has talked about uh, this work that she started when she was uh, a, a, a young, aspiring uh, revolutionary and where she's at now, that her legacy continues to manifest through this work, that um, brother, um, uh, our, our beloved brother Rasan talked about when Kevin was uh, his teacher at Montero Middle School, he wasn't Baba Kevin at that point because he didn't have any young kings. And, and now he referred to that master teacher as Baba Ke uh, Kevin, who's actually the program coordinator for the Office of African American Male Achievement. And so y'all, please come on out to uh, the spring symposium, Black Love is Liberation, um, April 25th through the 27th, where you could begin to see how we center black boys while we address this toxic ecosystem, the system, the structure, the conditions, and the culture. Um, and that is legacy work. Uh, and it's multifaceted, very complex work that requires a multi-generational, inter, uh, uh, inter, well, excuse me, multi-racial, intergenerational, cross-sector uh, approach to uh, really centering our young kings, but addressing uh, that system. So you got a taste of that today through Sister Cherie, uh, Brother Rumi and, uh, and Brother Rasan, and just want to encourage you all to come out. And so with that, I'd like to close with closing thoughts or reflections from our two kings, um, who we're, really we're here to serve. And so, uh, Brother Rasan, Rasan, I want you to come back out. Man, if there was just one thing you would like to say to close out and just drop the mic, what's just one thing you'd like to share uh, with the audience, uh, King? We'd love to give you that uh, opportunity just to share some closing thoughts. I say thank you, thank you. Um, only thing I could really say is this is beautiful work. This is transformational work, and it's evolving because it's been getting done for a long time. I would love to give credit to Baba Chris, Mama Cherie, Jean Yana Marin. Like, there's a lot of great mentors that have been around that have been doing the work, and it's growing and growing. And to be here in 2024 and be able to have this event, like I remember when we were doing small things at the schools like this is massive and i really want to implore everybody to come out this is going to be a momentous decree and i can't wait thank you king um let's pass the mic to king rumi and allow him to give us some closing thoughts or words of wisdom before we uh uh bid farewell king rumi yeah um i would just say that this this work is like brother Rasan said super impactful um, I think that the stories that we have to share at the spring symposium is going to be super amazing. I would, I would say to everybody to come out. I think that the work is, it needs to be seen. So the more people, the better. And yeah. Ashe. Thank you, King Rasan. Thank you, King Rumi. Appreciate um, you all taking time out of your uh, very busy days. Thank you, Queen Cherie for your love, your grace, your leadership, your light. Um, Y'all, please come check us out April 25th through the 27th, the Spring Symposium, Black Love is Liberation, uh, where you could uh, begin to see and experience how we curate space, the skills that we're working with, not only young kings, but the adults that are paid to serve them on really how, how we transform this toxic ecosystem through schools, through community and through narrative change. Thank you for taking a moment to check us out. My name again is Chris Chapman, founder, CEO of Kingmakers of Oakland. Uh, please check us out on www.kingmakersofoakland.org or all of our social media uh, at Kingmakers of Oakland or Kingmakers O. Thank you very much. Peace, I'm out. That was amazing information. If you want to hear more, be sure you're at the Spring Symposium. Go to our website, kingmakersofoakland.org to register and make sure you attend. I'm your host, Stacey A. Smith. We'll see you next time. Greetings, my name is Chris Chapman, founder and CEO of Kingmakers of Oakland. Please join us for an extraordinary three-day experience at our Spring Symposium 2024. This year's theme is Black Love is Liberation. Our premier leadership development conference brings education and community leaders from around the country to network with others, learn new impactful strategies, and bring those solutions back to your respective schools and communities. This dynamic event is meticulously crafted to engage, encourage, and empower a multiracial, 
intergenerational and cross-sector community passionately devoted to the holistic development of black youth while ensuring excellence for all students. The dynamic speakers and engaging workshops equip you with the information, tools, and skills to be recognized as an impactful leader from the classroom to the boardroom and throughout the community. By building with like-minded individuals, you will feel supported and leave refreshed to be a champion for your students and families. Educators, parents, and community leaders, you can register now. We are excited to see you in Oakland, April 25th through the 27th for the Spring Symposium where Black Love is Liberation.